the Manitoba Moose. Uh, they sit in second place right now in the Central Division, 22, 10, 2, and 1 so far, and have, dealed, have dealt with about as much adversity as, uh, as any team has with a revolving door coming out of the uh, in and out of the dressing room. Let's welcome in one of the veterans of the Moose, Nelson Noje, to the club right now. Nelson, what's going on? Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm excited. Hey, you know, um, you know, first off, congratulations on the season. I mean, it has been wild. And, you know, obviously we haven't been able to attend games over the last little bit because of uh, everything that's going on. Uh, but, I mean, between COVID and call-ups, um, I'm not sure we've ever seen a season like this. And yet it doesn't really matter who is putting on the jersey, the Manitoba Moose, who's in net, who's in the lineup, who's on the power play. You guys just keep on getting it done and getting points. Um, tell us about the season so far and how you guys are doing it. It's been a lot of fun. And I mean, as you said, we, we've, we've had a lot of success here uh, early on in the season. And, and uh, I mean, each and every day, we just try and continue to build on that and try and keep that momentum going. Um, as you talk, as you touched on, it's been a bit of a revolving door in our dressing room too. Like we, we've had a lot of new faces. Um, with both injuries, COVID, guys going up to the taxi squad, guys going up to the jet active roster. So there's been a lot of turnover in our room, a lot of opportunity, and guys are making the most of those opportunities. And um, we're just, we're buying in collectively as a group is into what we want to accomplish as a team. And um, we're getting results at, at the end of the night. So it's been a lot of fun. I joked with Coach Morrison when he was on with us last week or the week before that, um, you know, for the last couple of games when we spoke, I mean, you're probably going to be putting the stickers on the front of everyone's helmets like Timbits hockey, just to remind people what guys' names were. I mean, from a player's perspective, I mean, how bizarre was it? And you guys were literally bringing in not just one new guy, but like a bunch of new guys, sometimes on a game-by-game -game basis. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, just to kind of put it in a perspective, like I, I had COVID on the last road trip, uh, along with a few other guys. We went into protocol. We had guys called up. So you'd think, okay, we have new faces in the dressing room. You're probably going to see them at some point. Between my, myself getting COVID with a group of guys, there were other positives throughout that road trip. And more guys started coming back. There were faces that came through that dressing room that I didn't see over a five-day five day period. So it's, uh, it's been a lot of turnover, like I said, and a lot of new faces. Um, but it's it's kind of neat at the same time too. You kind of you get to meet a lot of new people along the way, and um, when we're winning, it makes it that much better. Well, and of course, everyone uh, you know, whether you're new or you're a veteran, in your case, I mean, everyone seems to be pulling on the rope in the same way and buying into uh, you know what Mark Morrison's preaching. Tell us about the new head coach. I mean, uh, you played for a long time for Pascal. Um, what's Mark been like to to play for, and uh, what's he done for your club as um, you know, continue to chase uh, a Calder Cup? It's been great. It's been, it's been really good. I mean, Mark's coaching style as opposed to Pascal's is a lot different. So I think for guys like myself who've been with this club now for X number of years, it's been an adjustment period. But with that being said, um, I think, and it's, it's funny you bring that up because this was asked uh, of me in the uh, post game interview of after our game on Sunday as, as far as Mo's coaching style and being more of a player coach and how that's been for our group. And I think that's been really good for a lot of guys. I mean, it's, it gives guys uh, a sense of allowing them to be comfortable uh, with the game that they play and, and knowing that they have a little bit of freedom to be creative with what they do on the ice. And, and uh, I mean, Mark, Mark puts the game plan out there for us that, that we want to accomplish as a group. And then, um, as I just said, having that little extra bit of freedom for guys to do what they want, feel comfortable, uh, helps us just play play a better sound game for 60 minutes. Nelson Noje, the Manitoba Moose, is with us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Uh, Nelson, a number of young defensemen on the uh, Moose have gotten a chance to uh, do what you did back in the 16-17 season, and that was play your first game in the National Hockey League. Uh, you, at that point, actually got 10 in that season. Um, but you know, from a guy that, you know, is a bit more of a veteran, certainly at the AHL level has had a taste of the NHL. Um, what was it like seeing the likes of, uh, well, Dylan Sandberg and Declan Chisholm and Declan, interestingly enough, I mean, 
you know, and maybe this isn't the case. I think the perception was that, you know, you've got this sort of depth chart of some guys that maybe were drafted higher. Um, but those two guys come in, play well. It's a 3 nothing shutout win. Dylan Samberg gets a few more games. Now it looks like Johnny Kovacevic might get his shot. Philly got a chance yesterday. I mean, uh, what's that like for a guy that has been doing that, has done that before, as well as a teammate, seeing these young players, um, you know, get a chance to taste the uh, the National Hockey League? I couldn't be happier for these guys. I mean, I've been here now longer than those guys have, given given my age and uh, getting drafted before them and having not left the organization. So I've got to see these guys grow from their first, second development camps into their first year pros and into the the people and the players that they are. So, um, I mean, there's a little bit of sense of pride there too, knowing that, I mean, myself, I try and be a leader in the dressing room and hopefully... Um, have given these guys a shoulder to lean on uh, throughout throughout the early years of their career, and and knowing what they're going through as far as the emotions and the excitement of, of playing in their first NHL game. So um, it's just it's a good feeling for everyone around, and and like I said, extremely happy for those guys. What advice did you give them before playing their uh, first game in the National Hockey League outside of uh, challenging and fighting uh, one of the toughest guys in the league? <laughs> I didn't have to give those guys a whole lot of advice. I mean, they're they're uh, very highly skilled and highly talented players. And um, I mean, for those guys that I did reach out to, I just said, just play your game, keep things simple, and you'll adjust quicker than you think. Well, I've got to ask you, I mean, and people will kill me if I don't bring this up, but I mean, your first game famously was, I believe, against the Columbus Blue Jackets, and you somehow ended up dropping the gloves with Jared Bull. I mean, uh, was that part of the plan beforehand? Or uh, Tell us about that, but and what it's like for a young defenseman to go up and, wow, this is it. I'm, I'm, playing, in the, I'm playing in the NHL. Yeah, it was cool. Like it, I think that fight was in my fifth game, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and, and Bull was playing for Anaheim at the time, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I was paired with Mark Stewart on the back end, and it was just a, it was a high hit. It was in the second period. I'll never forget it. Like it's it's still one of my most memorable moments of my hockey career to date. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I knew exactly what I was doing or getting myself into. It was just one of those things that I felt was right in the heat of the moment, and I wanted to do whatever I could to stay at that level. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I went to the penalty box, not really knowing, not being a whole lot much of a fighter. So I go to the penalty box and there's less than five minutes left in the period. So you're actually supposed to go to the dressing room at this point. And uh, the crowd at the MTS Center at the time, there was just electric. I'll, I'll never forget that feeling. And, and just the boys rallying around you for, for sticking up for a teammate, especially that early on in my career. Uh, Nelson, um, you know, back to this season, we've talked about the success of the team with everything that has been thrown at you and it continues to be with the amount of defensemen the Jets have out and the young guys that are now up with the club. Um, but in your role, um, you know, that's kind of developed over the course of the years. I mean, as a veteran player, how is it different for you than uh, maybe when you were trying to cut, get your feet wet as a, you know, just as a pro to now being an established member of the club that, you know, obviously is looked on for leadership and a big, big part of the team, uh, both on the ice, but I'd imagine also off the ice to help sort of let these young men know what it takes to be a professional and, you know, how to handle themselves on both sides of things as they uh, try to, you know, follow their dreams. For sure. I think at this point it's, it's leading by example. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I mean, it's, the game's changed so much. Like when I remember when I was a young guy, there were a lot of older guys. Like I, you never looked at a 25 year old as being necessarily an older veteran player at the time. Cause the American league was a little bit older in my opinion. Um, but it's crazy that I at 25 right now. I'm considered an older guy. And um, but I mean, back to, back to my point of just leading by example, it, it's being consistent every day and doing all the right things at the rink, whether that be on the ice or off the ice on both practice days, off days, treatment days, game days. Um, it's just, it's paying attention to those little details. And, and those are now habits for a guy like me having been around it for so long and just trying to not necessarily preach to the younger guys, but just, just make sure that they try and stay on that same path so that they can achieve the utmost uh, success in their own careers. Hey, you know what I, you know, I obviously asked you about some of the defensemen because you would have played with them and practice with them, but uh um, what did you, uh, what did you garner from Cole Perfetti's time with the Manitoba Moose? I'm not sure whether he's coming back anytime soon. We saw a couple just, I mean, big league plays last night for him in his ninth game. 
looks to play 10 tomorrow. And uh, that will mean his ELC goes. I, I think we all expect him to be here for a while. But I mean, um, you know, you saw him last year into this year. Fill us in on, uh, you know, what, what you saw from him coming in day one to uh, now what we're seeing him do it in a, in a top six role with Winnipeg. He's a remarkable young player. He, his hockey sense is some of the best that I've ever seen um, in a player that I've played against and I've played with. Like you look at a guy like Mark Shifley too. I got to be around Mark Lotz last year uh, being on the taxi squad and his hockey and sense and hockey IQ is through the roof. And I see a lot of that in Cole as well. Um, getting the handful of games that I did last year in the American League and playing alongside Cole for those 12 games. And he was making plays that he was 18 at the time, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken. So he's 19 now, correct? I think he just turned right? 20. Or just turned 20. Okay. So anyways, and, and just the plays that he makes and the poise that he has playing a man's game at that at that young of age, it, it's, it's remarkable. And, and you look at a guy like him and he's just getting his feet wet in the NHL. As he said, nine games pushing for 10. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for his sake that we don't see him at the American league level ever again. Um, but, but the ceiling that he has as a player. And it, I mean, it goes for most players when they make the jump to the NHL, the more repetitions you get at that level, the more games you play, the more shifts you get, you get more comfortable and you really start to flourish as a player into the player that, you were drafted as when you were playing junior hockey. So I think Cole has a lot more to go yet, which is, I think, a huge compliment to him. I mean, that that's just how highly I speak of him as a player and how, how good and effective of a player that I see him being in the NHL. Hey, you know, one other teammate that I have to ask you about is Mikhail Burden. And, and I say it not to judge his goaltending, but just as a defenseman, how different is it to play with a guy like that that often roams around as if he's another third defenseman? Hell, maybe a forward sometimes. Tell us about the Birdman and the unique game that he brings to you guys, especially as a guy that's on the ice with him. Yeah, we talk about that all the time in the dressing room, how um active he is out of his net it, it's so nice as a defenseman when you have a goaltender who plays the puck like that and plays it well for the most part um there'll be times where birdie gets caught a few times and and maybe is a little too ambitious with his puck handling ability but um more often than not it's crazy like as a defenseman you always got to bust back and try and get get first touch on a puck or, or get back and be an option for the goaltender but when you have the bird man in there it's <laughs> You're not necessarily an option for him, regardless of how open you are. There's 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 a lot of times where he's completely bypassing the D and he's looking up ice to try and send it to a forward who's already in the neutral zone or is just coming back into the D zone. So he's a very unique goaltender, and and uh, I mean a lot with him too. I think he's going to have a a lot of NHL potential too if he kind of settles into to playing some games up there and and continues to play the puck the way that he does. Hey, just speaking of goaltending, I mean, how about Evan Cormier? I mean, wasn't even on the team. You had Holm and Burden. I mean, both guys are unavailable or up. And, I mean, this guy comes out and, uh, you know, puts up big-time numbers and just keeps on winning games. I mean, what an addition. I mean, credit to Zinger and uh, uh, the guys who obviously found him. But, I mean, that's uh, that's another great story about this Moose season. It's it's remarkable. I, I really – it's just – I don't really have a whole lot to say other than the fact that it's just been phenomenal how he's come in and played the way that he has. He single-handedly won us games um, in the month of January with some of the saves that he makes and, and him just keeping us in games and allowing us to try and maybe spin the momentum around if we don't necessarily have it in a game. And I mean, hats off to him. I, I just, He deserves to play in the American League. There's no other way to put it. Uh, it's uh, another great story of uh, one of many from the Manitoba Moose season so far. A couple games on the weekend, uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. A little bit of a college schedule, and then you guys are going to get real busy, much like the Jets coming up in February. Um, it'll, be, it'll be interesting for the team to see how you guys are able to handle that because, you know, at times in the American Hockey League, it's just part of it, and you'd be used to it. You're getting used to it, especially earlier in the season playing on the weekends, practicing during the week. And then, I mean, just looking ahead at what is on your docket for the month of February, uh, guys better be ready. It's going to be a lot of hockey. Yeah, it's going to be busy, but you know what? That's, I think collectively as a group, that's what we would rather have. I mean, these, these be play Saturday, Sunday, have a week off in January and February. You don't want that as a player. You want to keep going. And especially right now with the momentum that we have as a team, you want to try and keep that going. You don't want to take your foot off the gas. So 
I, I think, you know, we're going to try and continue to play that way that we are here over the next couple of weekends and, and get through these weeks off. And I mean, take care of our bodies too. I mean, there's, there's the, there's the body management that comes into, into that as well and making sure that we're staying healthy and maybe taking care of a few bumps and bruises. But when the schedule's starting to get heavy, I think we're, we're looking forward to that. Nelson Noje, the Manitoba Moose is with us. Hey, Nelson, before we go, I mean, we were just chatting quickly off air uh, while Jerry Rice was on with us. I was asking if you were watching, you know, the National Football League. You said you weren't really for a long time, and then you caught the fantasy bug, and now you're all in. I'm all in, yeah. I mean, a lot of people listening to this probably don't want to hear this, but prior to being an NFL fan, and I still am, judge me as you may, I'm a, I'm a diehard Ryder fan too. Hey, you're from Saskatchewan. I, I mean, we would expect know, nothing less. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, when we're at the lake in the summer times, so we've always got the Ryder game on. So, um, I mean, that that was my involvement in football until COVID, and then and then I got introduced to NFL fantasy football and just NFL football in general. And I have been hooked ever since. I've got a uh, a league back home with the buddies that I train with, and it allows us to kind of stay in touch throughout the season too. But there's a lot of chatter in there in the group chat at all times. And it's, uh, I spend a lot of hours on the Yahoo fantasy app. <laughs> Who was the MVP of the, the Nelson Noje squad this year? And how did the team do? The team finished second place. I was, what was I? 13 and two going into the playoffs. That's pretty 13 good. And one. Yeah. 13 and one going into the playoffs. So I had a good year loss in the final. So a little bit disappointing, but I, uh, I worked the waiver wires real well. I had some guys that kind of pulled their weight when I needed them to, and I just couldn't pull through at the end. Well, there's always next year. Um, you know, what, 28 teams in the in the league are thinking about that. Of course, we've got the uh, Niners and Rams and uh, Bengals and Chiefs on the weekend. It's going to be great. And, uh, of course, uh, you guys will finish that game on Sunday afternoon and probably roll into the dressing room and uh, buckle up for what should be a great NFC Championship game. Listen, Nelson, this is a great conversation. Thanks so much to you. Uh, continued success to the Manitoba Moose. Been a great season so far, and uh, we'll be looking forward to following you guys and hopefully catching up again before the Calder Cup playoffs. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for your time, guys. Take care. Hey, appreciate it. You can follow him on Twitter at Nelson Noje. There's Nelson Noje of the Manitoba Moose. Uh, yeah, man, just a great conversation and, and really interesting to hear Nelson talk about, um, you know, as being a veteran leader with the moose um playing with these young guys and i mean that that those sort of answers that we heard from him, that's exactly what you want a veteran to sound like when you know some young guys are getting the opportunity to go up to the national hockey league i mean sometimes it probably can't be easy um you know knowing that you know there's younger guys that have been drafted higher that might be going up there but um what a member of the organization he's been spent a lot of time on the taxi squad um, and now doing a, a, a some real heavy lifting for the Moose right now through a tough point in the schedule without, you know, at any given time, maybe half their team that they started out with the beginning of the year. Big thanks to Dan Fink for helping us set that up.